You are welcome to SOC 206, Study Session 10, The Legal Institutions. Introduction Disagreements occur every now and then. Sometimes, disagreements can be among individuals in the society in relation to family matters, property ownership, and deviant acts. In such cases, there are mechanisms and institutions put in place to resolve such disputes. These mechanisms and institutions are known as the legal institution. This institution is our focus in this study session. Learning outcome for study session 10. After studying this session, you should be able to 1. Define and use correctly all the keywords printed in bolds. 2. List and explain at least two major methods of social control. 3. Describe the nature of customary and religious laws. 4. Explain disputes and conflict resolution in Africa. 5. Discuss the problem of ethnic pluralism in Africa. 1. The meaning of the legal institution. The legal institution or system is the process by which laws are administered and enforced. Legal institutions are structures put in place by members of the society for conflict resolutions. Legal institutions create laws, enforce law, and mediate conflicts among the members of the society. They are set up as an instrument of social control to place restraint upon the behavior of members of the society. The legal system in Africa are commonly based on civil or customary law, common law, religious law, or a combination of these. Indigenous African legal institutions are basically found on customary and religious law. Customary laws. Customary laws refers to the uncodified law or legal system developed and practiced by indigenous communities. Usually this type of legal system evolved from the ways of life, that is, the values custom and norms of the people. It is the traditional rule of practice that has become an integral part of the accepted and expected behavior in the community and is treated as a legal obligation. To illustrate this point among the vias of Syria alone, there are unwritten law against murder, treason, rape, abduction, seduction, adultery, and theft. Offenses such as murder and witchcraft are known by all members of the society to be punishable by death, while offenses such as rape, adultery, theft, and the likes are known to be punishable by fines or punishments. Religious laws. Religious laws are moral codes embedded in the religious belief of a people. African traditional religions specify conducts that are regarded as good manners and those that are treated as abominable acts. Most times, the line between good and abominable conduct are spelled out through a number of do's and don'ts in the society or through what can be referred to as taboos. Religious laws meet out sanctions to offenders. However, these sanctions are based on religious dictates. 
two law social order and social control in a general sense law may be regarded as the explicit and implicit rules for conduct of members of the society that are generally recognized or accepted and for which positive or negative sanctions can exist according to Ridcliffe Brown 1952 defines law as those rules of conduct which have been officially announced as essential in a particular society and which are officially enforced it has to do with the use of force and regulate individual and group conduct and to prevent redress or punish deviation from prescribed social norms law provides a means of dealing peacefully with whatever conflicts that may develop in society social order and social control are closely related and are sometimes used interchangeably social order refers to a set of social structures and social practices which conserve maintain and enforce normal way of relating and behaving in the society similarly social control include social mechanism that regulate individual and group behavior leading to compliance to rules of a given society three disputes and conflict resolution every society has institution that adjudicates disputes and address any form of threat against peaceful coexistence in the society these are mainly done through sanction when violence occur in the society or a member of a society violates the rules of the society there will be a need to resolve this violation Disputes are usually settled between aggrieved party, either peaceful or violently, depending on the severity of the dispute. Besides, the method of conflict resolution also serves as a system of social control in the society. Conflict resolution not only serves as a means of restoring peace and resolving issues, but it also serves as a precedent and an ideal for others to follow in future. Conflict resolution not only serves as a means of restoring peace and resolving issues, but also serves as a precedent and an ideal for others to follow in future. Traditional African Dispute and Conflict Resolution In traditional African society, great emphasis is put on peaceful resolution of conflicts and the promotion of social harmony through the principle of custom and tradition of justice. For example, among the talency of Ghana, Violent resolution of conflicts are generally avoided. In order to promote peaceful resolution of conflicts, they celebrate a festival called Golib, in which all disputes and feuds between clans were forbidden. Peacekeeping in most African communities followed four general principles. The first was the settlement of disputes by deliberation and discussion rather than by force the second was by correction of wrongdoing by compensation except for serious crimes such as murder the third was trial or adjudication 
by the elders who were considered to be impartial and the fourth was the use of fairness in any dispute situation for disputes arising within the family for instance a father and his son or between a man and his wife such cases are resolved in some african society by the family aid if the aggrieved person is not satisfied with the resolution the case is referred to the head of the lineage for further deliberation and settlement of the conflicts when disputes involve persons from different lineage the procedure for conflict resolution is slightly different the issue causing grievance to any respected members of the community say the head of his lineage who could call upon the head of the offender's lineage or other elders to help ensure impartial arbitration the elders will be the one to decide who was the wrong and settle how the aggrieved person will be appeased among the Igbo people in Nigeria dispute resolution are done in five indigenous ways it could be through the family head the umwadas that is married daughters the village tribunal the age grade or the religious priest the family head mediates in certain marital disputes such as cases of delinquency boundary disputes such as cases of delinquency boundary disputes and other cases between family members if a member of the family defies a family head is married daughters Umwada may be invited to resolve the disputes or enforce compliance with the decision matters involving persons outside the family or issues that threaten the stability of the entire family were referred to the village tribunal composed of 10 to 15 lineage units the tribunal units handled matters relating to traditional ceremonies festival contract disputes with strangers and the lights for disputes among the youths these are handled by the age grade while disputes of mysteries nature such as cause or strange illness are usually refers to the priest or medicine man such mystery issues are often resolved through divination peaceful resolution of conflicts african society have various means of settling disagreement among individuals groups or parties in a peaceful manner in society without written or codified laws one way the legal institution is in society resolved conflict in a peaceful way is through community action this could be in form of expelling the culprits from the society or even executing the individual another way of peaceful resolution of conflict is true oath taking and ordeal oath taking and ordeal both involve appeal to supernatural powers oath taking is an act that involves calling upon the deity to bear witness to what is being said while ordeal has to do subjecting an accursed person to a dangerous and painful test in a bid to determine guilt or innocence for instance in some society 
an accursed person is forced to take some form of poison if he or she survives it serves as proof of his or her innocence in some society where laws are written or codified conflicts are settled peacefully in traditional law courts for instance the ashantis of ghana have an elaborate legal arrangement in ashanti court procedure elders determine and cross-examine weaknesses as well as parties to the dispute there were no advocates appeal against a verdict could be made directly to the chief heading the courts in indigenous african proverb also serves as means of peaceful conflict resolution violent resolution of conflict although african generally avoid violent means of conflict resolution they do occur sometimes individual may resort to violence when there are no effective ways of resolving disputes for instance when there are unresolved conflicts among communities districts or political entities it may be difficult to prevent welfare among this set of people apart from using words to resolve disputes aggrieved parties may decide to raid their opponents by using force to acquire goods animals or other form of wealth belonging to their opponents ethnic pluralism in africa burundi and rwanda most african society are pluralistic in nature african countries are laden with ethnic religious and cultural diversities which are common source of tension in the past few decades or nearly half of a century african society have been undergoing difficult times in terms of ethnic religions and sometimes cultural conflicts these have taken different shapes and dimension in africa while these conflicts may not be preconceived at the time of occurrence they normally cause untold damage and losses to illustrate this let us take major ethnic crisis in burundi and rwanda there are various accounts on the genocide that occurred in burundi and rwanda concerning the ethnic strife between the between the utus who are the majority and the tutsi who are the minority a version of the 1902 and 1993 conflicts in Burundi reports that the vast majority of, of those killed were of Utu origins, representing approximately 80% of the total population. The perpetrators were drawn overwhelmingly from the Tutsi majorities accounting for some 15 percent of the population its representative holding full control of the armed force and the government the tutsi armed killed the utu people in 1972 and the tutsi people were killed in the 1993 genocide of burundi In 1994, the Utu majority in Rwanda organized and implemented the mass slaughter of the Tutsi majority. In just 100 days, 800,000 Tutsi were slaughtered. The Utus and Tutsis are two ethnic groups in Rwanda who share a common past. It was not until the European came to colonize the area that the terms Utsi and Utu took on a racial role. 
the colonialists empowered the Tutsi aristocracy and cemented the second class status of Hutus in what had previously been a fairly fluid social system. Upon leaving Rwanda, the colonialists reversed their favoritism and handed over to the Hutus. This did not favor the Tutsis. However, in 1993, the then president of the country, Juvenal Abiyarimana, made some amendments in the country's governing courts which favors which favored the Utsi, but the Utu extremists were displeased by this. On April 6, 1994, when President Abdiyarimana was returning from a summit in Tanzania, a missile was shot at his plane and all on board died. Within 24 hours after the crash, Utu extremists had taken over the government, blamed the Tutsi for the assassination and begun the slaughter of the Tutsi which lasted 100 days. In Nigeria, there have been a number of ethnic and religious conflicts as well. There have been religious clashes between Muslim in the core north and Christian living among them. Presently, the country is battling with the menace of Boko Haram, which is threatening the peaceful coexistence of the national populace. Summary of Study Session 10 In this study session, you have learned that 1. The legal institution or system is the process by which law are administered and enforced. 2. Law are rules of conduct which have been officially announced as essential in a particular society and which are officially enforced. 3. Customary laws usually evolve from the way of life, that is, the value, custom, norms, and so on of a people, while religious laws are moral codes embedded in the religious beliefs of the people. 4. Dispute and conflict resolution could either be peaceful or violent. 5. Most African society have numerous distinct ethnic, religious or cultural group within a particular society and these group are prone towards conflict. End of study session 10. Thanks for listening.